Hello everyone, this is Grandmaster Josh Friedel, and today I'm going to be starting a new video series I'm doing called Autopsy. And I don't know how it's going to go, I haven't really done something like this on my own yet, but uh, we'll see if you guys like it, then I might continue uh, and do it on a weekly basis, for example. And basically, with Autopsy, the intention is to go over say one game per week usually and the difference between autopsy I would say and just going over a game usually when you go over a game you look over the interesting moments try to figure out what's going on you know analyze the position learn about chess I mean and these are all great things to do uh, going over one of my over games both of my own and of other players is one of my favorite things but one of the ideas that I like to use and I try to do it on my own games is actually I call them autopsies but you can call them postmortems or whatever you want but basically not just go over the game but really try to ascertain what is the cause of a loss or of a draw when you should have won or of a result um, so you really perform an autopsy on the game and try to figure it out so part of it is not just figuring out where you went wrong or the most important mistakes but what mistakes led you to lose? Oftentimes, you can play a move which maybe by itself isn't so bad, but you played it with the wrong idea, you had the wrong plan, and therefore it really caused your loss more than, say, a blunder later on when you were already under huge pressure. So I find that this is kind of a useful thing to do. And again, if, if people really like it, I can perform autopsies on your, own, your games. You can submit them, perhaps. Uh, I might do a few on my own. So I can kind of learn where I'm giving away my points. Always useful. Uh, so I actually wanted to start with a game that was played recently in Norway chess, round three, between uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen is white and Levon Aronian was black. And this was a very straightforward, very impressive win. But I want to go over the game from the point of view of Aronian and essentially perform an autopsy. Like, why did I lose? Why, you know, what went wrong for me this game and wh how can I maybe correct that in the future? Now it's very difficult to do, and I'm even going to flip it so that we can see it from Black's perspective. It's very difficult to do it from another perspective, especially from one who's so strong. I mean, Levon is one of the best players in the world. I'm a GM, but I'm not going to kid myself. I'm not near Levon's level. So to determine why he lost the game is a, ver a real challenge, but at the same time, I think I can try to figure out, you know, what was going on, and not just that, but what caused various mistakes. So again, because we're really trying to figure out why you, why he lost, we're not going to focus as much on various parts of the game. If something's really interesting, I might point it out. But okay, let's start from the opening. It's a Roy Lopez, or Spanish, Knight F6. The Berlin, I assume that anyone who's followed chess in the last 5, 10, 15 years have seen this opening more than you'd like. But we're going to do it anyway. Knight takes e4, rook e1. This is kind of the trend. They're not going into the end game. They're trading into this position. Bishop back to f1. The bishop was hanging on b5. Knight takes e5, takes, castles. Rook e1, knight f5. Now here's the first real branch. C3 is a more common move here, but I would say it's a little bit less ambitious. You get a very symmetrical position where maybe white can be slightly better, but it's very difficult to actually do a lot. Carlsen, of course, as white, wants to try to win this game. So he plays d5, which is a more interesting move. It's a little bit riskier. It opens up the bishop on f6. To call it risky is a bit much, but the idea is that you're really grabbing space and making it harder for black to complete development. So black plays rook e8. It's very common to trade off these rooks early uh, in these positions. Takes, takes, queen d3, d6, knight d2. So Carlsen, I think most people played knight d2 before taking on e8 even. And Carlsen's idea is simply to get the queen out. The queen on d3 is more useful than on d1. Um, but again, we're not going to focus uh, on those moments too much. And I really want to focus on this moment because... Even though Levon didn't, strictly speaking, play an awful mistake here, I think that this is really what, this move really is what 
you know, pushed him into a tight corner, made it so that his life became far more difficult than it had to be. And I think that this this move, almost more than any move during this game, really led him towards a loss. Even though it's not a blunder, it's not some move that gives up anything tactically, but it's, I think, the start of a bad approach, and therefore what led to his position becoming worse and worse. So, if you'd like, uh, why don't you pause your video and try to figure out what you would do as black. How would you approach this position? Not just in terms of what your move would be, but what would your ideas be? What are you trying to do? Um, so pause if you'd like. Uh, if you're feeling lazy, you can just not pause and I'll tell you. <laughs> but uh, it's up to you. In any case, I think that black has uh, a a wide range of options here, but the main problem, I think, is space. Black just lacks space. Um, it seems like everything's okay, you can play bishop d7, uh, which would be quite a normal move here, for example. And then white would play knight e4, for instance. Computer actually likes the move bishop d4, but to me that's not very human. Bishop e5 seems more natural to me. Uh, white plays bishop d2, so note how if you try to grab this pawn, then rook b1 and they take here, which probably would favor would favor white. And uh, so black can do all sorts of things, but notice how there's just not that much room. You can play queen f8, rook e8, but it looks awkward. You can play queen d8, but then the rook can't get out. If queen e7, then rook e1, for instance, and all of a sudden you have problems along this file, you just don't have space, and you don't have room, and I think that this is a big problem in this position. So if it were me, and obviously during a game, who knows if I would come up with this, but um, my approach would be to play the move c6. And the reason is very simple, I want space, and I'm okay with worsening my structure in order to get it. I think that if you just try to play slowly, you're not going to be able to repair your position fully. You're always going to be up against it. Whereas, I'm willing to risk having a worse pawn structure in order to give me some play, give me some counterplay, give me some ideas. So knight e4 seemed like the most natural move to me. If white takes and plays c3, for instance, you can play d5, and note how you have more room now. You can play knight d6, bishop f5, for instance. You can get your guys out. And that's sort of the most important thing. So knight e4 would be the more annoying choice. So probably the bishop would head to e5. Notice how f4 is always going to be a bad move due to bishop d4 check. The d-pawn hangs. The king is actually a little loose now. Uh, this would be quite a welcome uh, sight. c4 uh, would be the logical choice trying to maintain this pawn, but now black can play very simply. You can take... Queen takes d5, runs into bishop d7 to c6, the bishop gets out. Notice how all of black's pieces are very active here, uh, unlike what we'll see later in the game. c takes d5, bishop d7, bishop d2, and now there's a wide range. Um, you could play a move like a6. Rook c8 looks nice, but you're not really doing much on the file. My choice would probably be queen d8. So my idea is very simple. I want to play queen out to b6, where it's nice and active, and play rook e8. Notice how all my pieces are participating. Everything's fairly active. White doesn't have too much they can do. I'd say black's just about equal here. Maybe white would still try. I'm sure Carlson wouldn't just give up here and say, you're too good for me, man. I offer a draw. But I, I would say the odds of winning this game are a lot lower. Levon played a very understandable positional move. But I think that it's truly the wrong approach here. So he was thinking rather than play c6, and I don't know why he didn't do it, maybe he didn't think of the idea, it could just be that he didn't want to weaken his structure, he wanted to keep his structure nice, because right now black has no weaknesses at all, and he wanted to keep it that way. So a very common strategy in positions like this is to trade off the dark squared bishops. So he plays this move bishop g5. So the idea is you trade off the dark squared bishops, of course if you have less space, peace trades make sense, it's very logical what he does, but I think that it's just not the right choice for this position, because after Carlson plays knight f3, takes, takes, let's see what happened. It seems like, okay, you've traded off the dark squared bishops, one fewer piece to worry about, but development-wise, I really do not like it, because white improved the knight. This knight's not doing a whole lot, but eventually it might come to d4, um, even later it can become more aggressive, as we'll see. 
But now the rook's ready to come to e1, which means that white will have the file. And the problem black has is that you've just lost too much time because you basically traded off a piece that never moved. Um, so you don't even have like the bishop hitting b2, which can sometimes restrict the bishop on c1. You don't have a lot of different things. Um, and this is just really annoying. So at the moment, it seems like just from a very logical you know, trade, black is already in trouble. So I would say that this move, bishop g5, while not objectively the worst move in the, on the planet, just wasn't really the right choice for this position. And now, for example, if you try a move like c6, you're too far behind in development, and bad things can happen. For example, after rook e1. So here, queen f8 might be the best move, but this is horribly passive, and it's not easy to make a move like this. But to be honest, I still don't like black's position. But for example, if you try queen d8, trying to you know play bishop d7 and get the queen out, say, to f6, white can simply play d takes, b takes, and then g4. And this is a very strong move because the knight just doesn't have a good square. If you play knight h6, h3, this piece on h6 is just horribly, horribly passive. Uh, so you could want to go back to the knight e7, but now white has the very strong move, queen e4. You hit the knight. This pawn is hanging, so king f8 is not exactly ideal. If you move the knight, then queen comes to e8. And for example, if you try to do this, okay, takes on c6 is maybe not so clear because I can take this guy. But if you play queen e8 check, takes, takes, knight here, knight d4, for instance, this just looks extremely depressing. Uh, the pawns are hanging. If bishop b7, rook e7, I mean, this is just not a lot of fun. So it's just too late to play with c6. So Levon plays very logically with bishop d7. And my guess would be he just felt that white couldn't do anything here. Black has no weaknesses. Once again, you've traded off lots of the pieces. Like, what could be the danger? But the problem is that white, black can never fully activate. Black can never really get stuff out. And it haunts him essentially the rest of the game. So rook e1, queen d8. So queen f8 would be desirable. But the problem is that white can always play queen c4. And the c-pawn just has no good way to defend it. Like, there's just no good way to defend the c-pawn. You could play rook c8, but of course that's horribly depressing. C6, as we know, is quite weakening now, and I don't think really solves the problems. So there's just no real great solution here. So black plays queen d8, white plays queen c4 anyway, just improving the pieces, putting pressure on c7. Black plays g6, giving the knight sort of an out and also just gaining a little space. h3, knight to g7. So again, I mean, just trying to fix the knight. The knight on f5 didn't do much, but where is it going? There's just no great square for it. It's one of these really weird positions. Rook e3. So, I don't know, Carlsen's idea could be to play queen e2. It could be just to put the rook on a nicely defended square. It could be sometimes rook can slide over. Notice how, because black can't really activate anything, Carlsen does not have to be in a rush. And, of course, this is the kind of exactly the kind of position he likes. Black plays a5, understandable move, trying to get out maybe this rook via the queen side. Of course, Carlson puts a stop to that. And once again, we have one of the major choices, and I think that this was again a moment where Levon perhaps could have done a little bit better. So I really think that this was another moment where he had to be like, look, my position is a little bit worse. But nothing horrible has happened to me yet. There's no no disaster. But I need to create some form of activity. I need to force White to make difficult choices. So I think once again, c6 was his move. So I understand why he wouldn't play it. After d takes, it's very, very awkward. For example, if bishop takes c6, knight d4, I mean, maybe black's okay here, but this bishop is out of place. The d-pawn's weak. Uh, it doesn't look pleasant. But after b takes, I didn't really see anything for for white. I mean, okay, you can maybe play d5, knight e6 next, maybe c5 sometimes, and then bishop c6. It's it, Certainly white's better. Black has weaknesses, potential weaknesses. Black has more pawn islands, black's pieces are a little awkward, but at least you're out. You know, the knight has the e6 square, you can push this pawn up, you can push this pawn up, the rook maybe has a b file at some point. There's stuff you can do. And I think that he really was very stubborn in that he did not want to create weaknesses. 
And not wanting to create weaknesses makes a lot of sense. Obviously, you're not going to... No one wants to create weaknesses on their own. Well, some of my students do. <laughs> but I, I would say that... You know, the desire not to create weaknesses can be too great sometimes, and it can force people to play too passively. And I think that actually is one of the main causes of death for Levon uh, in this game. That he just really just did not want to create weaknesses under any circumstances. He thought that he could sort out his pieces on his own. He thought that White couldn't penetrate. But it turned out this was far from the truth. He played knight e8. So Magnus uses this move to play queen d4, and now a move like c6 often can run into either c4 or bishop c4. And it's not nearly as desirable because it actually activates white's pieces. So it's a bit too late. Um, for example, if white black plays a move like knight f6, white can even just slow down, play b3. And now if c6 trades in bishop c4, all of a sudden white's extremely active, knight g5 is in the air. D5 is always going to be a horribly ugly move, uh, and what, Black's just going to suffer forever in a position like that. So Levon plays a very understandable move, Knight G7, threatening this fork. And Magnus plays G4. So this moment would have been a real red flag for me, and it may have been for Levon as well. A move like G4 is not usually a good idea in these positions. It's just very weakening. You're inviting H5, you're inviting F5. But you look at this position and you go, well, wait a second, why shouldn't white be able to play g4? Black has no active piece, not a single active piece. The queen and rook are stuck. White has the only open file. There's no piece that's ever going to get at black's king or take advantage of these weaknesses. White can play, black can play h5, but you're going to end up opening your own king just as much as your opponent's. And to me, the fact that white even can play g4 is a real problem. Um... And my guess would be that Levon really at this moment decided, you know what, now's maybe the time to play c6. The problem is that it's a little bit late. Um, you know, he's the queen's already on d4. Black, white is not obligated to take this pawn. It's, uh, you know, it, it was a little bit too late. So I think that had he been, you know, realized that this trouble was coming, that g4 was going to lock him out, he would have maybe a little bit sooner played this move c6 and gotten better chances to have counterplay and maybe draw the game. Um, so in this position, I actually like bishop c4 myself. I think this bishop is just very strong. Knight g5 is in the air if the queen ever ventures too far with this f7 weakness. This looks like a very attractive move to me, but Magnus is very much a control-oriented player. Uh, which is quite understandable, and he wants to just keep a lockdown on Black's pieces, wants to make sure this knight never has the e6 square, um, and his aim was really to make Black passive. And this position, I think, was the other main um, branch. And believe it or not, after this move, while not strictly speaking losing, it seems like Levon almost had no chances to, to save this game. Um, he maybe could have persisted a little bit longer, he could have held on a little bit better, but after this move, it was already difficult. So here, it's already a difficult choice, uh, which is why I highlighted bishop g5 in the opening, why I highlighted not playing c6 later. Because his position is already difficult, you could say that those mistakes, even as slight as they might have been, really caused most of his problems this game. Because whenever you're under huge pressure, especially against the world champion, but this is true against anyone, you're just more likely to make more errors. And you have to look just as hard at how you got into that situation as how you handle it when you get there. Because already here, he has to make some tough choices. But I think that he chooses um, not the, the best course of action. He played in 88, which is an understandable move. I think a lot of us might play it because the knight's just sitting on g7 and doing nothing. But I think that he should have chosen one of two other choices. So there's one choice, which is... I think a lot of players would actually do it. The players who are more materialistic. Um, I don't know if I would do it. I think I might be too scared, especially with Magnus sitting across the board for me. But uh, not everyone has my uh, fear of grabbing material. So c5 is actually not that unreasonable, with the idea that after queen f4, you just take this pawn. Is black doing fine and dandy here? I don't think so. Uh, white plays knight g5, of course. 
And black's going to be under pressure here. Um, there just aren't that many ways to defend this kingside. Uh, queen f8 is a logical move, for example. But now white can actually switch it up entirely and play the move rook a3. So maybe the bishop has to go to d1 or c2, which is quite scary. Um, it can go back to d7, but then white plays here. The b pawn hangs, rook b6 is coming. You're under pressure. However, I would argue that, and a lot of players really would make this argument, that when you have an extra pawn, you're at least suffering for something. You've heard all heard this argument before. Um, at least when you have an extra pawn, you can afford to give your opponent a bit of an initiative, because at least you have a light at the end of the tunnel. If you survive, you have that extra pawn, it means you can sack it back later. Do I think black's doing well here? No. Uh, I think that black would be in some trouble. But at least he would maybe get a pawn for his troubles. The move which I would probably choose myself, however, is to take on d5 first. Uh, and the difference between this and Levon's idea is actually more tactical than it is positional. But the idea is you secure this exchange first. So the advantage is you kind of open up, you, you make it so that white doesn't have the option of ever taking with the queen or ignoring you. Um, and now you play knight e8. And the difference is that if white play, like, okay, probably white should slow it down now and play a move like b3, just solidify the position and say, look, I'm just better. Uh, and certainly white is. Uh, but if white tries queen f4, which actually happened in the game, Black can get some counterplay. They can play knight f6. Note how now you're threatening knight takes d5, which is a strong tempo move. White can try knight g5. But after h6, it's actually not so easy. Um, if, Black, if white tries to play, th there's this move knight e6, but now you can actually take on d5. And that's quite annoying. Whereas after rook f3, uh, which is probably best, I think that black can just take everything, take on a4, and most likely this game will be drawn. So the, the direct approach doesn't work here, meaning that white would at least have to slow down and play a move like b3, but then, okay, then black maybe can try uh, knight f6 type moves. Maybe black can play rook c8 and get the rook out. At least there are ideas. Um, maybe even a move like h6, as ugly as it is, just to keep an eye on that knight g5 move. I actually like h6 as an idea after b3. It's not easy to play. It's really tough, but at least you're kind of hanging in there. Um, he played knight e8 immediately, queen f4, and now there's a serious problem because you'd like to play, oops, you'd like to play knight f6, but the problem is that after knight g5, your h6 move does not work anymore. Uh, you can take on d5, but then I can play rook f3 first, and this does not lead anywhere good. <laughs> Uh, that's all I can tell you. Um, for example, if you play h6, I can actually sack on you. Play queen takes h6. Now g5 is a huge threat. And for example, if I play queen h8, okay, trades, maybe you can survive. But even if I just go back to d2 with g5 coming, this is just horribly, horribly painful. Um... You're, you're just going to get massacred here. So you can enjoy the extra piece while you got it, but it's not going to be a fun time, I can tell you. So, and after h6, now white has the very powerful move knight e6. And the idea is that if takes on d5, there's just no time, because if knight takes d5, you can just recapture. If pawn takes, of course, the queen is hanging. So basically, because you don't have the time... Uh, you really are just in huge trouble. Uh, and after knight e6 takes, takes king g7, for example, is maybe the best shot, but even though you're not down material, your king side's horribly weakened, g5 is coming next, which is not going to be fun at all. Uh, even g5 instead of bishop d3 was possible, but bishop d3 looked more simple. Um, anyway, this is just a very, very bad position for black. Uh, so I'm sure Levon saw this and maybe was kicking himself for not taking earlier. Um... Yeah, and if c takes d5, of course, you play knight g5 and rook f3, and you transpose to the other line uh, I mentioned above, uh, where, you know, f h6 you sack. So Levon played king g7, which is understandable, and now Carlson actually switches gears. He doesn't necessarily have to, but it's kind of a nice way to do it. He plays rook b3, hitting this b-pawn. If you allow rook takes b7, your position is just in ruins, so he plays rook b8, knight g5, and... 
okay, strictly speaking, he played some bad moves now and lost very quickly. But I would argue that this wasn't the cause of death for him. This wasn't the the real reason he lost. He lost because he allowed himself to get under this kind of pressure. Uh, and obviously, you're playing someone like Carlson. You don't have that many chances. Uh, and that's the thing. Like, analyzing it, you know, for most players, for most players of my caliber and below, say, his mistakes would be entire, really minor and wouldn't necessarily cause a loss. But because he's playing such a an accurate opponent, uh, these are mistakes which he really... You know, should, you know, someone level Vaughn's caliber should not be making, uh, and that was really the reason why he lost. So here he played knight f6 and ended up losing rather fast. F6 is kind of a painful move. Uh, if you have to play this, it's already like you're wincing inside. You're like, all right, I don't want to live anymore. Please just take me out of my misery, type of thing. Um, but maybe it's one of the better moves. Uh, probably better than what he did. Queen f6 is probably what I would choose. Um, and, of course, white should avoid the queen exchange, so now rook f3 is a threat. So, I would play h6, knight e4, and then maybe just go back with the queen. And, again, you're under huge pressure here, it's not a lot of fun, but maybe you can at least hope to survive to defend. And, of course, Levon is a extremely strong defender once he... Uh, sinks his teeth into what he has to do, so he would have at least had chances maybe of holding here, but it's very difficult. Uh, he played knight f6, rook f3, and the end came rather swiftly. Queen e7 would have held on a bit longer, but it's already huge, huge pressure uh, that he's under, and I, I don't think that it would have would have made a difference in the long run. He played h6, and then knight e4, and now it's just, just over. Takes, takes. Queen takes g6, and he resigns. Uh, the only move that would make sense here, because your knight hangs and, rook, and queen takes h6 is in the air, is to play queen e8. You can take this pawn, but the simplest is just rook f7, and you're threatening a zillion mates. Black has to sack the queen. It's just over. So after queen takes g6, he just resigned. Uh, so it's amazing how quickly things went down, even though he was just under some slight pressure. Obviously, some of it's the Carlson effect, but I think that a lot of it is just... You know, he was under just this enormous pressure, and it makes it so hard to play well. So when it comes to performing the autopsy, or, okay, how did you lose? Um, you know, and to talk to someone as strong as Levon, you're talking my, uh, more minor things, but I really think that it was his approach. It was the fact that he didn't want to create weaknesses for a long time, and it caused him to just play too passively. He underestimated the danger to his position, I would say, slightly as well. He maybe thought his position was a bit better than it was, a bit safer than it was. And he didn't play as actively as he could have. And he's an active player, so I'm sure that he wanted to play moves like C6 in some sense, but he probably didn't realize like how passive his position would end up. So essentially, there were two moments where he could have maybe slightly weakened his structure, but gotten activity. And instead he chose to play solidly, but too passively. And while that, those weren't his blunders, notice how I'm not even mentioning his blunders as the reason why he lost. Of course, if he doesn't blunder, he can at least last longer. But I think that the reason why he lost was those two decisions and the decision-making process of simply, you know, refusing to make weaknesses and, you know, he ended up playing too passively as a result. So anyway, that's kind of how the videos are going to work, how my format's going to be. Uh, definitely... You know, let me know if you have some comments, if you have recommend recommendations as far as games. At some point, I might, you know, take viewer games and things like this. Um, I'm certainly probably going to throw a few of my own games in there just to uh, try to learn myself. And uh, believe me, I'm sure I've made far harsher mistakes than Levon has. In any case, uh, I hope you enjoyed my first video. And also, I hope that I'll be making more in the future. Um, again, Leave me a comment uh, with what you think, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you.